like to thank you for taking some time to watch this video today. This video stems from a question from a customer. Am I able to block a specific email address or a specific domain with Semantic DLP? The answer is yes, and we are going to show you in this video. What we will do is we'll send an email from one user to another user uh, just to make sure that it works. We'll create a policy that just generates incidents, so alerts us that this is, communication is happening. And then we will generate a response rule that will actually do the blocking. If you have any questions, shoot me an email and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm looking at my DLP system. I am going to log in as administrator. Um, any account that has privileges to author response rules will be all that we need. Let's see, I forgot to type my password. So, all right, I'm signed into the system. So let's send an email first. So it's gonna come from my local user to my cloud user. So I have two domains, itslab.local and ITS lab.cloud how's that old radio announcement the emergency broadcast system test right if this is an emergency this is a test this is only a test um, if this was an actual emergency further instructions would follow let's go ahead and hit send here it will come from my inbox what I'll do is I'll force a send and receive you know, 1137, 1137, here's my information. So we know that communication is working. Always a good thing to test in a demo. So I'm back to the DLP system. So I want to do a policy. Now I've had this built already, but I'll show you how it works. What we're gonna be working on is this block based on email address policy. So I've given a good name and a description. You can see that right now it's suspended. But what we're going to be doing is tracking this based on a specific vector or protocol, in this case, email, and then a specific user, so my recipient matches pattern. The reason that I picked a specific protocol is in case there was anything on the web or through the endpoint that had that end user name, um, it would still go through. It's pretty easy to select that first condition condition is email and then what I've done is I a sender I'm sorry a recipient match pattern if I delete this we'll show this how it goes so I'm going to add a condition down here at the bottom my drop down also match Note this is an and statement means down at the very bottom here, recipient matches pattern. So there's a couple of things that I could do. I could do a whole domain. I could do a specific user. I could also do IP addresses or a URL domain. But let's go ahead, cloud user one, itslab.cloud. Verify that I have that in there, cloud user one. Go ahead and click OK, and you can see my compound rule. Go ahead and save this, and then let's activate it. What this will do is this will generate a DLP incident. So if I go to Servers Overview, you can see that I've had six incidences today, which is cool. I've been doing a lot of testing. So now from my local user one, send an email address cloud user um, important information does this go through please reply if it works if my policy is right we will now have a new incident in the DLP system so if I refresh, see our number right now is six. If I refresh, that number went up to seven. 
So now, incidences, network. See, I've been testing today a lot. So important information. So cloud user, the email message. If I scroll down, right? Does this please go? Does this go through? Please reply if it works. So now we are just generating an incident, an alert if something happens, right? So if somebody ever sends to cloud user one, we just want to be alerted, just notified. Well, let's take it to the next step. I want to now block. We'll go to manage, response rules. I have some response rules that are built in already. Take a look at this guy. This is the one that I've set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to block that outbound message and notify the sender. So I'm going to bounce the mail message. Um, or I'm not. I'm going to redirect it. And then also in English, I'm going to provide, you know, my subject. And then what actually happened. So anytime you see this dollar sign and then text, it came from one of these variables here. So let's just retype this message so you can see how it works. An email with the sub of, and then my subject variable was blocked by the DLP system due to a policy violation. How does that sound? The policy so you see how this is HTML? Um, I could make this blinking red or flashing colors or whatever I wanted to do um, because I'm sending it as an HTML message. I'm just going to leave it with that um, kind of boring text. Let's be a little bit more polite. Um, if you have questions or concerns, I call myself what? Director of IT security. How does that sound? Hey, I got a promotion. All right. So go ahead and save that. Now, at this point, we're not done. We need to associate this automated response rule with our policy. So go back to the policy, sorry, manage policy, click on it. And then there's this response rule tab. Select the drop down, notify sender now. If this was production, the fact that there's got this random S here capitalized, that would bother me, but let's let that slip through today. So give it just a second to sync. That policy is now active and updated. And if everything works correctly, we should get a notification back. So cloud user, um, DLP blocking response rule test. This is a test So what should happen here is that the cloud user will not get that email a message. And I should also get a notification at local user. I did, so it worked. So, right, an email with the subject of, and then my response rule, or the subject of my email, sorry, was blocked by the DLP system due to a policy violation. The policy that was violated was, if you have questions, Contact IT security. Perfect. So what does that look like within the DLP system? So if I go to incidences work, you can see that I have a red circle here. Well, what does that mean? That means that my blocking response rule is triggered. You can see that right in the network prevent action it was blocked. Also within the history, you can see exactly what happened within that mail message. So once again, we are able to block a specific 
um, email address or, or domain with semantic DLP. This video was a quick little overview of how to do this. If you have questions, feel free to send me an email. My email is listed on this PowerPoint slide. Thanks and have a great day.